Welcome to Tal Capes. I'm Cody Nestor. He's Todd Hill. How's it going, everybody? Back at it again after an extended break. Sorry for the delay, folks. Yeah. But we're back, and today we're talking about DC Studios, The Penguin, Episodes 1 and 2. Nice. Some chap named uh, P. and Gwyn. P. and Gwyn? The Penguin. Todd, what did you think the story was in Episode 1? So basically, we're uh, picking right up off the heels of the Batman feature film, uh, Oz Cobb, as we're referring to him here, uh, has kind of went back to the old Iceberg Lounge. He's kind of nosing around looking for some stuff. That was run up on uh, Carmine Falcone's son. Uh, things go a little bit south for Oz, and uh, it sets in motion uh, some events that will uh, come to involve two crime families. <laughs> yeah, so I love how we pick up right after the Batman. Yeah, It's just like slipping right back into that warm bath that was Matt Reeves, the Batman. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about later like how well it does that and how well the show kind of moves from film to television. But I love how we pick up right there. We see a news report about the death of uh, Carmine Falcone, obviously died at the hands of the Riddler at the end of the Batman 2022. Yes. Uh, John Totoro, he's out as Carmine Falcone for what I understand. And just a scheduling thing, no kind of hard feelings or anything yeah. like that. Uh, Mark Strong in as Carmine Falcone, at least in kind of news footage. He's not really featured here in mm -hmm. either of these two first episodes. What do you think about that recast to start off? Well, I mean, as far as, you know, events in the episode, you know, like say he's a corpse. So yeah. <laughs> unless they do something in flashback, you know, it's not that big uh, of a deal. Which I would assume. We're kind yeah. of already seeing a little flashbacky yeah. kind of, you know, uh, ethereal kind of, you know, with so Sophia and some of the stuff. So yeah. there's a little bit of going back in time and yeah. stuff like that. So you that. don't really cast Mark Strong just to be like an old picture on the front of a newspaper. <laughs> Yeah, I'm assuming we're yeah. going to get some backstory to kind of set up his relationship right. with his daughter and things like that with the rest of the family yep. and all that kind of stuff. But, I mean, Mark Strong, solid actor, great in everything, uh, the best live action and only live action Sinestro ever. Yep. So, yeah, can't can't go wrong there, right. I think. I mean, I love John Turturro. I understand scheduling. I get that. But as a recast, as a choice, I think you're you're perfectly fine with Mark oh, Strong yeah. here. So I'm, I'm curious to see if we go forward, if we get some flashbacks here. But to just kind of go through the story a little bit here in episode one, um, what did you kind of think overall here? What's your, what's your overall thoughts about the Penguin before we kind of get into it? Uh, I thought it was a very solid first outing uh, for a first episode. Uh, you kind of see where I heard, you know, I had heard some not really spoilery things, but I kind of heard some comparisons to this to like other maybe mafia crime type TV Sopranos. shows. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, people's always got to do that thing. They got to compare something to something else, you know. Baseball players, football players, TV shows. Right, yeah. But, you know, I, I thought it did uh, very good standing on as its own thing. It kind of, you know, it's definitely tied to the Batman film, but it's it's being its own thing. And I enjoyed it. I thought I'm a sucker for these crime boss, mafia, you know, backstabbing, double dealing yeah. type things. <laughs> it's one of those kind of things, if it's not broke, don't fix it yeah. in a way. And I mean, yes, it borrows tropes from other popular yeah. kind of gangster media through the years. But in a way that's sort of different or at least, you know, kind of putting its own spin on things. And yeah. the characters and the writing is strong enough that that doesn't matter. So if anybody's kind of out there and they're like, well, this is just like a knockoff of other gangster shows or it's a Sopranos wannabe, DC Sopranos. It's not that. It no. stands enough on its own. Yeah. Uh, even, you know, you should just come at least for... If you if you didn't watch the Batman, obviously you should watch the Batman. But I mean, you should just come for Colin Farrell's performance alone. Exactly. Yeah. So we'll we'll, which we'll talk about that as well. But I mean, this is definitely very 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 strong. Uh, obviously, we'll get to reviews later. But this is a very 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 strong first outing um, for this uh, first premiere episode. So kind of going through the story here. So uh, after the events of the Batman, pretty much the, most of the city or parts of the city is kind of underwater, washed out from the really destroying the seawall. Right. Oz is going back to the iceberg lounge he's looking for some uh blackmail photos of uh johnny vd in the yes. episode uh some might know him as doug from house of cards <laughs> right. uh he is uh if you prefer <clears throat> that he's also he's going back to also recover some diamonds as well some jewelry that's kind of been left in the iceberg lounge alberto falcone shows up he is the new head of the Al uh the falcone crime family now that carmine is out of the way he's there for the diamonds we see uh, a little bit of setup alberto is kind of wearing sal maroney's little pinky ring little pinky ring yeah. Which uh, Carmine had taken off of him after he kind of sold him down the road in the drop steal and all that, and obviously right. Sal Maroney is in uh, is in Blackgate Prison for uh, this show and has been there for a while. 
Alberto let slip to Oz about a shipment of some type of new drug that's going to hit the market that the Falcones are kind of bringing in, a new shipment coming mm-hmm. soon, uh, a new drug that he's got he's kind of come up with. And you get this great scene between Oz. He kind of tells a story to Alberto about he's kind of like an old school gangster from his neighborhood that like he kind of helped out people. His name was Rex Calabrese. Yeah. He tells him a story about that. He was a guy who helped people in the neighborhood. They loved him. They knew his name. When he died, he was, I uh, says he was celebrated. He was revered. He was remembered. And uh, he's telling Alberto about this and, you know, all, and the different kinds of power is what Oz tells Alberto the story is about, but really it's kind of about what Oz really wants, his yeah. feelings, what he would like to be seen as, remembered as. He yeah. wants to be revered. He wants to be. He wants to be someone. He wants to be remembered. He wants to have that kind of effect on his neighborhood, his or the people around him, yeah. and, and kind of be someone. And uh, you immediately get Alberto. He's immediately like, "Fuck that shit." <laughs> He's like, uh, you got, what do I want to be, some small-time asshole? Is that what you're telling me? Yeah. And then we just get, and it's just like so like matter-of-fact and so immediate, you just get Oz immediately just shooting him, just killing him immediately. Blows him away, Just yeah. blows him away. And I just love that he kills him. It's so matter-of-fact, like any kind of you know great gangster film, like most of the kills in those are like the ones that are just abrupt and matter-of-fact. Mm-hmm. And this one just kind of goes into it, and you see that kind of, the shift from Oz, his reaction is immediately like to kind of laugh at it and to kind of like, oh, you know, you stupid ass. And then <laughs> right. you kind of see him go from that laugh kind of turns into realization. Oh shit. I've killed the boss's yeah, son. And that turns, <laughs> that turns into panic. Yes. I've, I've killed the now head, my former boss's son. Now the head of this crime family, I've killed him in that reaction. Yeah. And you kind of get the fallout from that as him trying to basically the rest of the episode is tried to cover his tracks, cover that up, get rid of the body yep. and uh, some, uh, some hijinks ensue from there i would say um do you want to uh well i'll let you kind of set this up so oz is trying to he's moving alberto's body is a great part where he's like trying to carry him down the stairs and he's like why am i doing this let me just chuck his body down the stairs right which is a great (laughs) little moment uh he's trying to move alberto's body he's outside kind of messing around in the street going to his uh, his car he meets a teenage kid named victor uh tell us how oz and uh, vic kind of come to meet and a little bit about vic's character so they are kind of him and a couple other guys are trying to boost oz's wheels and he kind of fires some gun off at him actually shoots the back of his own car it's very gaudy purple and gold penguin mobile i guess you would call it right and uh vic's the only one that didn't get away oz kind of gets a drop on him and he's like you know he kind of like you know get puts the screws to him a little bit he's like you know hey kid what are you doing here what was you what was you thinking you know and he kind of you know takes him under into the fold a little bit he's like you're know, gonna help me get rid of this body you're gonna help me and at first it's kind of like you you kind of see it's like for nefarious purposes he's going to use this right. kid to help him move this body he's probably going to off him whenever he unloads the body wherever mm-hmm. but through the course of the evening some other events happen they kind of like develop a little bit of relationship um it's it's definitely Oz kind of beginning to kind of take him under his wing, seeing maybe, maybe for, again, purposes that are not too, like, genuine, maybe, like, yeah. sees a way to use this kid. Maybe there is a little bit of genuineness in it. They kind of come from the same area. Vic kind of mentions his family was from, like, Crown Point, which has been one of, like, the most hit areas of right. Gotham with all the stuff that's happened with the Riddler. So uh, he kind of uses him to kind of help him with the body. They stop off at, I guess, a friend of Oz's that's a hooker or she like a madam, madam, uh, uh, I don't know, porn star. Right. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what she is, but he uses her for an alibi for that evening for his whereabouts uh, at the time Alberto was kind of killed. And so we kind of get from there our other big, I say probably our second major character of the show, which is Sophia Falcone, yeah. uh, the Hangman, recent, yes. uh, recently released from Arkham. She's back. She wants to know who killed her brother. Obviously. We'll probably talk a little bit more about her when we get to episode two, kind of leave that for now. What did you think of uh, the scene where Oz goes back to uh, his apartment? He's kind of chilling out there, kind of, you know, kind of collecting his thoughts, you know, figuring out what his next movie is. Uh, we get to see a little bit more about Oz and uh, some of his uh, ailments, one of them being his, I guess, club foot. Yes. His club foot that gives him his kind of penguin esque kind of kind gait. of waddle. Yeah. Yeah. What did you think about uh, Oz's club foot, Doc? Very gnarly and very painful looking. Yeah. And it's no one of those things that kind of going back to Vic, you kind of get established that Vic kind of has a little bit of a he's a stutterer. He kind of has a speech, not really a speech impediment, but he kind of gets ahead of himself and kind of stutters when mm-hmm. he gets excited or you know threatened or you know you know nervous. Right. 
And I, maybe I'm kind of off base here, but I kind of thought it's not really said, but I think maybe Oz maybe kind of took pity on the kid because he kind of sees, you know, he's got a ailment kind of like something my he foot. couldn't help. Right. right. Something, you know, out of his hands. That hinders him a little right, bit, and know. he's still making the best of making it. I can be- see yeah. that. It's yeah. not really something I thought of, but I actually, yeah. I like that kind of connection that, that's made there. I think that's probably another part of their relationship that's, Pretty multifaceted, even right. for this uh, this you know, for early part of this episode. There's a great scene where they're like, I guess, I don't know, they're down by the docks or in some kind of old factory because they end up dumping the body in like an old car somewhere. Yeah, an old trunk of put a it, car. Yeah, put it in the trunk. Yeah. There's a great scene where they're eating like burgers together and it's like the pickle scene where Oz is like, I asked them for extra pickles. I got I, They gave me two pickles. What's <laughs> what's normal? One one pickles, the normal pickles? Vic like, offered like, him his pickles. Yeah, and... it's like, I don't want to wear your dirty mouth being like that kind of thing. I mean, right. like the performances here are great. There's not a bad, there's not a bad miscast. No, not a sour note, note at all. Huh? No, not at all. Uh, another relationship we see here uh, between kind of Oz is that's kind of in his personal circle, his very small personal circle, is his mother. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of revealed she's kind of living in this kind of suburban neighborhood. He goes and visits her. His his reasoning for going there is he's he's about to split Gotham. He's like me, you, the kid. We're gonna leave. We're getting out of here. Mm. I fucked up. I killed Alberto Falcone, and you know we got to get out of here. And she. He's like, it, it, and it's kind of the, it's not an original take on the gangster mother yeah. and son relationship, you know, with the mother that's like discourages or hates weakness. Cause at one point she's like, oh, what are you, Oz? Some kind of pussy boy? <laughs> you know, those kind of things. Yeah. It's, not, it's not an original take, but it works and it helps to kind of inform the character that you see Oz already is by the time we meet him in. The Batman, but also yeah. especially kind of here. Because so, she wants him to stick around and take credit for this thing, you know, yeah. own up to it. Be make, somebody. You, make something out of this. Yeah, yeah, be somebody. Make yourself something out of this. Exactly. <laughs> she's, uh, he's, I can't remember exactly what she calls him, but, you know, she's like, you know, kind of hyping him up as like, you know, the, you're like this, you're a bull, you know, you're a bull yeah. of a man kind of thing. And right. like really feeding into his ego. And she wants him to be somebody. And I think her motivation, a lot of that for, especially you see it in episode two, is her motivation for him as being somebody. By extension, she feels that that makes her somebody right, too. Because yeah. she asked him at one point, she's like, "Who am I if my my boy is a nothing? If my boy is a nobody?" Yeah. So again, it's multifaceted the kind of relationships uh, that you're kind of getting here, a la your classic kind of gangs, you know, gangster parables yeah. and things of the past. Um, at one point here, we go to the kind of getting the the plot kind of moving here because, again, Oz is taking steps. He's trying to make sure nobody found finds out what happened to Alberto, finds out it was him. But he's also trying to move things along because the Falcone uh, family there, the higher-ups are basically like, it's too hot right now in Gotham. Everything's kind of destroyed. You know, probably the Batman's looking around. Like, it's not it's not a good place to move drops right now. We're right. our territory. We're going to close up shop. We're going to move up to Robbinsville, I think is mentioned. And we're going to move much, somewhere much safer in Gotham. So Oz kind of uses that to kind of position himself to go to Sal Maroney, mm-hmm. played by Clancy Brown. Yeah. Uh, no stranger to DC properties before. No. People, people may remember him. He's the voice of Lex Luthor in the yeah. uh, Superman animated series. Done many DC projects and things like that over the years. Great actor. And uh, he's going to him, Sal Maroney, in prison, and he's saying, hey, um, the Falcones are going to move our operations up to safer part of Gotham. I'm offering you the Maroney's the ability to kind of take over that territory, get the drugs, get those drops, and, hey, I'll be your double agent, Sal. Yeah. And Sal, Sal's really not going for it. He's not having it. He's like, At he's, first, he's not having he's it. He's like, I'm not going to I'm not gonna partner somebody where, whose loyalty is, like, you know, this questionable, and yeah. you just kind of flip back and forth. So he wants no part of it. So Oz, he kind of leaves, but he gives Sal um, Alberto's ring, which is originally his ring, his yeah. ring that Carmine took off of him as a, as another sign of like the that uh, to lord over what Carmine had did to to Sal back yeah. in the day. So that is the kind of the middle part of the episode because it's about an hour plus episode. It's yeah. about an hour or ten minutes mm-hmm. running time on this one. So we flip it kind of back to Sophia. Sophia is not buying it. She thinks Oz has something to do with this. Yeah. She knows in her heart, Sophia knows that Oz has something to do with her brother's death. Either he was behind it or he knows who was behind it, basically. So she has him captured. Uh, she has him tortured a little bit with like, was it like a, it was like a kind of a line? Was of, it kind of like a piano like, wire or yeah, a garage right line? Yeah, or, under, yeah. His, uh, under his arms. So I think similar to something up. she'd went through in Arkham. Um, and that kind of sets the stage. Uh, Vic's doing some stuff in the background. Oz is with 
Sophia and her guy getting tortured. You want to take us through kind of the ending, how everything wraps up in episode one here, Todd? So all that's kind of going on. All of a sudden we hear a commotion out front. Everybody kind of races out there. Oz is still left tied up. And uh, we see that same car that the Moroni kids bought. Moroni kid. The, the, uh, Falcone kid. Falcone kid. Alberto. Sorry, it's been a month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Alberto's body was in that trunk. It's kind of, you know, wrecked up around the property, and they kind of, the trunk's kind of popped up, and uh, the, the ring finger was cut off with the, and then and it was in the trunk, it said, uh, re, what was it? Re- payback. Payback, yes. Payback. So you think back to Oz taking that ring to Sal in prison. You know, mm-hmm. He's like, you know, hey, you've been walking around in prison with this ring on. Everybody knows, hey, where'd that ring come from? Yeah, basically <laughs> Oz's plan to kind of divert suspicion is he's 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 putting it on the Maronis. Right. He's putting this on as some type of payback for what was done to their family by Carmine and basically giving them the credit for Alberto's death and saying, hey, this is payback. This is kind yep. of comeuppance. And that's kind of where episode one, that's the kind of note we kind of close out yep. episode one with. He's kind of put Sal in a position where he, he pretty much has to get on board because that, you know, the, that family thinks that he's the one that killed the kid. Yes. Yep. And he's, again, he's set Vic on this path to be the one that's helped him. Vic obviously went back to where the body was, right. either got him in that car, put him in another car that he used to crash. Vic obviously had to saw his pinky saw off, too. The pinky off. So he's definitely, he's deep in this stuff, too. Again, we don't, the, there's parts of their relationship that seem genuine. Is Oz just kind of manipulating it for his own gains? I think we'll kind of see as the relationship right. hopefully evolves over these. I think it's eight episodes we'll see for this yep. first season. But yeah, Vic is definitely dead center in this. He's an accomplice now. He's he's pretty deep into this. There's not much going back at this point. So that that's where we kind to end off at episode one so ty let's do uh let's do review time let's go ahead and jump into reviews here episode one review time give us your review score and your thoughts for uh, penguin episode one honestly uh there's not a lot here in this first episode to hate on or even uh nitpick at i mean it was a solid first outing for any kind of series uh I may be shooting a little high at the target here, but I'm going to go a nine. I thought it was pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's a nine all day. Yeah. Uh, that was my first. Um, you know, I may have undersold it, but I think um, this is a amazing first episode. Yeah. Like it's Colin Farrell. He he disappears into this character. It's not just the makeup. It's not just the bodysuit or it's it's the performance. It's the limp. It's yes. the it's the way he walks, the way he moves, the way he talks. It's the character. It's the writing. That's what really sells this. And it, it, Penguin, the show, it takes a pretty good depiction of the character that we saw in the Batman 2022. Mm -hmm. And it's slowly kind of transforming him from a pretty good character into an amazing character. Right. This was, I think, you know, Sopranos comparisons be damned. Love the Sopranos. (laughs) Right, yeah. But still, this is not the Sopranos. Um, This was one of the most compelling series premieres that I've seen in a long time. I was you, yeah. immediately ready for two. Mm-hmm. If this was a bingeable show, I probably would have binged all of them in hey, one night. Yeah, Cause I, I was, you, yeah. I was really ready. It had me, it was compelling. I was hooked. So for me, it's a nine all day. Oh, it's yeah. an amazing show. Uh, if you're watching this, I'm hopefully that you've already watched the penguin, and you know, and you're just kind of coming here to see how we feel about it and what we're talking about and maybe add to the conversation in the comments. If you choose to, we'd love to hear from you, but please go out and watch this. This is a show. I think it's getting supported. I think episode two is doing better numbers, even than episode one. Yeah. So hopefully it's doing well. Hopefully it continues to do well. And I, I love how, um, what was it that came out recently? Joker. For La Do oh, yeah. has come out, and James Gunn was quick to say, well, this is not a DC Studios, because we got the old logo back, DC Studios, yeah. right? Got the old bullet logo back. That's not, that doesn't have that seal of approval. Yeah. This does, though. Right. This has that seal of approval. He was very quick, like, hey, this ain't us yet. Yeah, this, yeah. this is not Penguin, us yet. Penguin, though. That's Penguin DC, is. That's yeah. DC Studios, for <laughs> sure. For sure. So, yeah, it's a nine from us. It's an amazing first episode. Speaking of episode two, Todd, what do you think the story was in episode two, my friend? So, we're getting deeper here uh, Oz is in deep he's mm-hmm. still trying to uh, pin stuff on people to get the heat off of him for k- killing the Falcone kid uh, Sophia she's still hot on his trail yeah. uh, she is not convinced not convinced at all and it's just uh, it's just that back and forth it's like you know Oz uh, you know we get the setup with the Moronis trying to you know take getting the drops that kind of goes south Oz has to wind up getting into the the, uh, the main vehicle yep. that was going to get hit uh, it's just it's another solid episode yeah I'd say this episode is about um, it's about finding the rat and it's about giving us more Sophia Falcone right and kind of seeing what she's all about and where she is as a character here yep. uh, let's start there with her since we didn't talk about her much uh, what do you think of uh, Kristen uh 
is it Miliati's, Kristen Miliati's Sophia Falcone. Sounds good to me. I, I don't have that many <laughs> Sophia Falcone uh, references to go back to as far as the live right. action. Or she even was involved it. in what Long Halloween, right? Wasn't yeah. she? Yeah, she yeah. in it, but she was very much a side character. Doesn't she come back in Dark Victory? Is it that so. mostly around her? I think so. Anyway, yeah. yeah. But uh, another another solid performance, a great performance here. Uh, this actress uh, does a really good job with this role, I think. Uh, yeah, I think, um, you know, she, she comes across, she's intelligent, uh, power hungry, I would say, very guarded, very untrusting of most people. Obviously, she spent the life as a Falcon, and then now she's been in Arkham for doing something to seven women. You kind of hear it on the radio at one right. point. I'm not sure exactly what her crimes are in this universe. Definitely mentally unstable. She's very unhinged. Yeah, she very, can go from this stable to, you know, off her rocker just like that. Yeah, you kind of see how she's unhinged and kind of her poor manners because there's a part two where it kind of comes uh, full front and she kind of embraces it there's a part where she's at her brother's memorial and she's just eating handfuls of grapes and like a handful of like pasta salad or something and just like shoving in her mouth as we're hearing people already before she was in doing that talking about her and judging her and things that she had done and we see a lot of things in the episode where when she is at her brother's funeral there's like protests outside Mm -hmm. calling the falcons fascists and telling her she needs to go back to arkham and all this kind of stuff so you get some really good development for sophia falcon's character here uh, like I said, from the ending of episode one, um, Oz kind of set up Sal and the Roni family as the, the killer of Alberto. Sal, in prison, he kind of reluctantly agrees to this kind of a little arrangement to take credit for Alberto's death to kind of get back into the drops game to take over some of that territory. Yep. As you said, they have a plan where Oz is going to be part of this kind of heist between the Moronis kind of taking down a shipment of drops that the Falcons are moving. And um, in that, they kill a few goons. They get the shipment. Everything doesn't go exactly to plan, but mostly to plan. Mostly. Mostly to plan. Uh, but in that, a, a Moroni goon is injured. I can't remember his name, but he's an important part of this and a piece of this uh, yep. towards the end of the episode. Um, back with Sophia and the Falcone kind of family. Sophia agrees with the, the other kind of heads of the family that this is uh, definitely the Moronis are behind this, just based on the payback and how her brother's body was found. But uh, they have a she she knows there's a rat. There's a rat in the family Some, somewhere. Yeah, someone told them where that drop shipment was coming from. And again, she's still kind of suspicious of Oz because he's kind of going to her and he's kind of like. Putting himself in a position, it's like, hey, I'm on your side. It's me and you. Fuck let's, the rest of them. Let's go down to the docks, get this new ship, man. Yeah, I love your, I loved yeah. your brother. Like I'm on your side, and she's still very much keeping him at arm's length. Probably at two, best. yeah, two arms, two arms. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, she and her man, I can't remember his name either, but her basically her goon that was uh, torturing Oz in the last episode. Yeah. She hires a, a drop addicted Gotham detective that used to work for her father. She hires him to kind of figure out. Who the mole is? Right. Who, who's our rat? She puts him on the case, and uh, that's pretty much the big setup for here. How do things kind of shake out here, Ty, with the setup I give you? So she kind of, I think it's she's at her brother's funeral, and she gets a call, and it's that guy, and he's like, you know, I've got this um, Rony guy that was in on that bust, you know, the hit on that, the drops. Mm, uh, they got him out of the hospital, you know, basically. Yeah, yeah, you know, I've got him, you know, you... He takes it back to the Falcone compound. They kind of shepherd him down underneath in like a little private room. Somebody knows he's there. Yep. Uh, Oz and Vic kind of show up there. Uh, Oz kind of gives Vic instructions to put some stuff in. I uh, can't think of the guy's name. It's uh, Johnny Vitti. Johnny Vitti. They're gonna kind of. Oz is trying diamonds. to. Yeah, he's trying to set up Johnny Vitti as the rat. Yes. Get suspicion off of him. Right. Make it Johnny Vitti. Things kind of go south. Oz kind of makes his way down there. I think what was he? He was trying to plant or get something from that guy, and it goes south because Vic kind of messes up his part. Yeah, he kind of has to wind up killing the Moroni guy. Yeah, he wanted <laughs> he wanted Vic to put the diamonds in Johnny Vitti's car, and right. he wanted uh, the Moroni guy to tell him when they ask him who was give behind him the name. Yeah, tell him it was give Johnny Vitti. Give him Johnny but Vitti's when, name. But when Vic couldn't keep it up his end of the bargain, Oz has to kill the Moroni Oz guy. Has, yeah, Oz has to call an audible. With his pocket knife that yes. he still has in his pocket. A very ornate knife. Though. Yes, very ornate. Very nice. <laughs> right, very right. nice. Yes. So uh, they kind of get wind of all this, and they're like, you know, everybody in the compound, we're going to have a meeting. We're going into this room. Yeah, everybody that was part of that drop shipment. Yeah, get, get, it, get this in room. this room. We're going to have yeah. a talk. We're going to find. It should be mentioned that the head of the Falcone crime family at this point is Sophia's uncle, Luca. Right. So he's involved with Luca this. Luca calls the meeting. Yeah. Get out of the drops, guys, in here. We're going to have a little talk. Exactly. And so while that's going on, Oz kind of has a little brouhaha, a little, starts a little fight, and manages to slip that knife into uh, Sophia's, I guess it's her right-hand man. Yeah, the 
goon, the, the torture goon. goon. Yes. Kind of sits Christoph, him. maybe, was maybe. his name? Something like that. So he kind of gets set up as our rat. And he ends up getting shot, gets yes, killed. Right in the head by Luca. Right in the head, yeah. Yep. I sets him up. Johnny Vitti, unfortunately, he wasn't able to kind of uh, push things to him, which would have helped Oz's uh, predicament and helped him kind of advance right. up the ladder a little bit more. But he got it pushed off onto Sophia's kind of uh, her her goon there. And it also made sense because he was – she kind of sees it as Alberto was – going to meet him there that night at the iceberg right. lounge so she's kind of she's kind of pretty much bought in at this point i think between yeah. her and oz and and by the end of the episode you kind of see uh they've made this kind of uneasy sort of alliance yeah because her uncle's trying to just say you know why don't you take off you know take a few days what's yeah. this, try to send her to paris i think something like that Somewhere, yeah. you know italy italy, italy yeah. Yeah. Well, you know let us handle this. Yeah, she's exactly. gonna rest I've up. I've got this. Yes, yeah. and she's like, she ain't you know, buying it. Yeah, she wants. She wants the head of the table. She wants. Uh, she wants to take over the reins. She sees the kind of the missteps of the Falcone family, and Oz is positioning himself as kind of her right hand man to help her get to the head of the table and also cover kind of his own ass. And yeah. that's that's basically where yeah, we where leave we off it, yeah. in episode two. Uh, episode three at this point is out now. We unfortunately haven't had time to watch that. Yeah. We're gonna probably cover these in like you know two episode probably blocks i think there's eight episodes so one and two two and three and, and so on and so forth but uh ty what's your thoughts about that give me your review and your final thoughts for episode two and final thoughts for penguin so far i mean i i don't see no drop off here from one to two I, i'm gonna still stay with a nine i thought this was another amazing episode uh everything's ramping up the tension's ramping up right now oz is kind of positioned where he wants to be how long is that gonna last who knows uh, two episodes in, I, I, this is like uh, appointment TV for me right now. I, I, I want to watch the next episode. Like you say, if, if if all eight were already out there, I'd have done watched it. That's how right. invested I am. But I think it's another nine. I thought it was another amazing episode. Yeah. Something I, I forgot to mention. I was going to ask you this. I just reminded myself. Let me, um, I think we both agree the Batman 2022 had the best depiction of Gotham City so far in live action. I would say so, yeah. How do you feel that translates from film to TV with the Gotham we get in the Penguin? I think so far it's it's pretty pretty spot on, pretty close, yeah. Um, There's always more you can do cinematically than you can do maybe on a TV series budget, but I don't know what the budget is for this, right. but I mean, it's still I was impressed. looks I pretty don't, close. I yeah. don't feel that there's... Any drop off? Yeah, I don't feel yeah. that you would... You know, I don't feel like there's anything that I feel is like different. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not as as rainy and stuff all the time as Gotham. When we see different parts of it, obviously we're going to suburbs and like his mother's house, and we're seeing right. the Falcone Mansion and those kind of things. We're not always in the the dark parts of the city, but I think it does a really great job. And I don't feel like there's any, uh, you know, kind of. Uh, viewable, yeah, like drop off from yeah. what you get in the Batman to this. And another thing that we should we should mention here before uh, we finish up is um, seems people online kind of mad about the shortening of Oswald Cobblepot to Oz Cobb. Okay. I've heard people suggest that like that was uh, his name had been changed to that mm -hmm. and altered to that. Like, is that your read on it? What do you think about that overall? I mean. It kind of works for what they're doing here in like this, you know, as far as the movie and the series, you know, I mean, we know who it is. It's, it's Oswald right. Cobblepot. If he wants to shorten his name to be cooler or look more impressive, just be Oz Cobb. Or if that's just something, a choice they made, I'm right. fine with it. Yeah. I'll just throw this out there. It's not the worst thing that has been done to the Penguin this year, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah, And true. I think you do. Yeah. <laughs> See our Amazon Cape Crusader review. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I agree with you. I don't, because he's still called people still call him Oswald. Yeah, he's so still that's called just, Oswald. So yeah. the, I I feel I don't think it's some I don't think it's something that the writers have changed his mm. name to Oz Cobb. I think he was probably born Oswald Cobblepot. And he's like that's not fucking and cool at all. And as a as a gangster <laughs> in the Gotham in the Gotham City Underground, he's like I'm Oz Cobb. Yeah, I think that's what it is. I don't think they're positioning this to be like his name is Oz Cobb. Yeah, I think it's just he shortened it to be Oz Cobb from Oz. Oswald Cobblepot, because you're like, hey, you know, like Cobblepot as yeah. a gangster, 
in a in a grounded, you know, right. actual like fiction based TV show. He's like, got a hard enough battle with that name and that waddle, exactly, and that face. So he's got to do something. And there's a moment where Johnny <laughs> VD actually calls him. He's like, "Hey, Penguin," right? And you can kind of see that, like, it rubs him the wrong that way. Disdain for Johnny mm-hmm. and that disdain for that kind of yeah. name. So yeah, to kind of get away from that. And this is not a uh, this is not the kind of classic, or uh, I think it's mostly the kind of classic interpretation of the Penguin is like come for money type of thing. This is this is a, uh, you know, lower middle class to mm-hmm. middle class, you know, family that he was born into. He wasn't silver sp- spoon in his mouth thrown into a river by Mr. Bean and his wife. <laughs> right. you, know, you know what I mean? This this right. isn't that penguin. Yeah. And like, I mean, and it works absolutely perfectly. So I just wanted to kind of address that. I don't think it's... Not that big. Of I don't think it's a big deal at all. If, if that's something that, that bugs you about this show, I you have to get over it. <laughs> uh, that, that's all I can say for it. I'm right. sorry you feel that way. Yeah. Just get over it. Just get over <laughs> it. So it was a nine from you on this one. Yeah, I think it's still amazing so far. I'm going to go down to an eight cause just because okay. I don't I like. I mean, I was really in for for the first one, and mm-hmm. I just think the series of events work perfectly for a first episode to get you really right. compelled, get you really interested, mm-hmm. set everything in motion. And I think this still is a great episode. I think it's an eight for me. Okay, it's still great. I don't think it's as it's not on the same level as the premiere, but it's holding strong in that okay. great territory. Yeah. And like, I'm still. Ready to go watch episode three. I'll be watching that here in a day or so once we get caught up here. And, like, I mean, I'm still – I'm in. I'm oh, still yeah. in. Like, there's nothing that, is, that has, you know, made this at all dwindle in my mind at all. Like, I'm still completely in. I just don't think it's quite on the nine scale. Okay. I think it's an eight. Okay. Anything else to say for Penguin Todd? Just go watch it if you hadn't already. Exactly. Uh, I think that's it for this episode. We did it, Todd. After like a month of sickness, after a month of internet outages, (laughs) phone outages, hurricane power outages. Anything that could happen, happening. Yeah, exactly. We finally come back. We finally did it. I think we did uh, about as mediocre as we always do. (laughs) I know I did. (laughs) Uh, Uh, Yep. uh, Yep. All right. That's it for this episode. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Feel free to send us an email or get in touch with us on social media. Tile Capes will return. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye, guys. Later, guys. Oh, it's you. We're here, right? Let me see.